everybody welcome to a little video i decided to try and make um i recently got into needle felting and um you can see right here the four little things i've made so far um so yeah today i just wanted to make this little corgi again i think he's turned out to be the best one that i've made so far he was the third thing that i made the first one I ever made was this, a little shepherd mix. This is actually based off of one of my friend's dogs um, that I actually walk a lot. So I thought I'd make them a little little model of their doggo. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll just get into starting it. So like I, I gotten into needle felting because my sister bought a a kit for like cats and um i saw her i saw the cat that she made and i thought that was really cute so i just thought that i would be able to you know get into it Whoop. and um if you don't know what needle felting is it's basically just stabbing a piece of wool a bunch of times with a specific type of needle. Now I have, th I have three types of needles right here. I have a 38 gauge, 40 gauge, and a 42 gauge. 42 gauge is really, really tiny needle. So it will, you know, it's gonna be used for the smaller details like, like the nose and stuff. The kit that I got um, came with a little bag of these eyes. Um, now if you can see them yeah there they are don't have much left so once i run out i'll have to find out a way to you know use something else for eyes as well but i like the little shiny things they I like the little shine they give off this right here is actually based off of um let me grab it oh big straw boba <laughs> my favorite boba place i don't like boba but i do like their milk teas a lot so for the corgi it might end up being a little smaller than the first one i'm just gonna start stabbing around it I do recommend most kits will give you these, these little finger protectors. I do recommend using them, especially starting out because I have, I have poked myself. I haven't like bled from it, but I've poked like these fingers that don't have them, but I have poked the finger protectors before. So they'll definitely help you out. So I'm just going to get the basic shape of the corgi, basically like a little, I don't know what you would call it. <laughs> but like what I'll show you right here, what I want is, so I'm trying to flat, I'm making it flat and then he's going to turn into like a little bean shape. All right. So basically got it all roughed out. Now what I, this is basically just so, like it doesn't look smooth right now or it doesn't look perfect right now. It's just so this piece isn't like this to where I can just tear it off. See, like it'll, I'll have a little give and I can't just rip it to shreds. That's basically what the 38 gauge needle is for. It's just to like, bind together the wool just so you could have a good sturdy foundation and actually while I was doing this I actually poked my thumb I poked it right through the seam which um funny enough how I was going on about 
how important these are, but it just poked right through the one spot of it that is like the weakest. So I'm just finishing this up right now and then I'll get into doing a little bit more for this. So it's going to take a little bit more wool. And then on each end, I'm going to do this and then grab the 40 gauge needle needle. To just start, you know, poking that in so it doesn't look like, so it's not all like rolled up on the ends. Now this isn't like a necessary step. I just like to do it so that there's no like, you know, guarantee like it's a guarantee that it won't show because i mean there's gonna if you look at this corgi right here i'm gonna put white on the face so i'm gonna put white on one of these ends and then i'm also putting a little heart butt on it so then there will still be white on a different end. but you can see right here the how it like there's a hole it creates because it kind of rolled yeah and if you're wondering um what this dog is um this is one of my teacher's dogs actually she's a new teacher at my school and i thought hey you know she showed us a picture of her dog and i was like oh, i'll make her a little doggo that looks like hers so yeah just to welcome her to our high school um they're all in different poses i mean not 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 this one but whoop. But like all the dogs are in different poses. Um, this dog in real life is really skinny. So it's it was really hard to make it look like exactly like her. Because she's just a blob. And for this being my first one ever, like ever needle felting at all. Um, I think it turned out pretty good. She, always, she does like the dog stretch. This is supposed to be like her like stretching, not just laying down. Um, and then I wanted the Corgi to be one where he's just standing up because they have little legs. So it's like, you know, not much poses they could do. Um, and this dog I made a little bit longer so I can, I basically made the bean shape again and then just put it flat on its stomach. And yeah, he's supposed to be laying down. So yeah, so we got that side done. And now I'm gonna take another piece of wool. And yeah, if you're confused on what um like needle felting is, like what this is what like this is actually doing right now, um I'll try my best to explain it. Um, I'm not the best at explaining things to people, but you know, I will try. So basically these needles that I'm using, obviously the bigger ones are for more like broader things, like just creating the basic shape. Um, and this, what I'm actually gonna do next with um, the 40 gauge needle, needle is I'm going to go all the way around um, the whole thing and that's going to smooth it out like it's not going to be all scruffy anymore once I once I actually go all the way around it. So but like these needles these needles are a lot different than like say the other needle that came in my kit which is used for just poking holes in the eyes. Uh, focus yeah so this needle right here if you like run your fingers along it it's completely smooth there's nothing there but like one of these needles it is if you run your finger along it you could feel like little indents and what that does to the wool is it actually 
it actually catches on the wool as you're going in and out and in and out. It catches it and then it binds it together. And then that's basically why it creates this kind of tension between the wool. So I hope that made at least a little bit of sense to anyone who is even even ends up watching this video. I'm sure the people that watch this video first are people I know, unless I just don't tell them that I made it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was talking to my boss actually at work yesterday and he, I, he was telling me how like his friends, some of his friends love corgis. So I've been thinking about opening like an Etsy shop or something and selling not just corgis, but I was thinking like selling, you know, dogs, dogs, animals, uh, things of food. Cause I like, you know, I love cooking and I love, I love little miniatures of food. They're just so cute. Like I follow some accounts on Instagram that, um, do little like clay sculptures of food. And I want, I want to start getting into stuff like that, but I feel like this is a good start. I like to, um, whittle as well like i've like my my three hobbies because like i got into this literally as of recording this like a couple days ago <laughs> like i made i made i made her like five days ago i made him or i made him like three or four days ago, him two days ago, and then him I made literally last night when I got home from work. So yeah, I think it's a good idea. Um, Cause I think me and my sister are gonna open the shop together. Um, I have two sisters and one of them is very, very artsy. And uh, she's a very, she's a very good artist. She's a very good painter. And she likes making jewelry and stuff. And yeah, I think it would be cool to just open a shop with her and see. See if we can, you know, make some money off of it. Make some people happy with little doggos. So, yeah, now we have a nice little smooth. Like a smoother kind of bean shape. Um, I don't know what this looks like. I, I, I don't know what kind of shape to call this. <laughs> it's like a straight bean because the bean the bean shape I'm actually going for is like that more but first I'm going to do first I'm just going to start with 38 gauge and just kind of fold it and then stab it into it So I'm basically, it's like I'm folding it over and stabbing only part of it because then it'll, it'll smooth out in the middle as well. Now we got the little bean shape right there. Almost looks like a heart, but you know, it's a little bean so far. So now I'm going to do probably, I like doing, I like saving the leg. I, how I do it is body, face, nose, eyes, ears, legs, tail. So basically body, face, and then all the appendages, you know? I think that's going to make it easier because if I'm stabbing, if I stab this in after I stab this in, it might, you know, there's more room for, there's less room for error if I do the face first. So, all right, so I'm just going to get some white wool. Now we're going to work on the face. So. Set the little bean aside. 
And now for the face, I like to use the 40 gauge nail or needle. I don't know why I keep saying the wrong word, but just stab it a little bit. Flip it over and then stab it again. You can see I'm pinching right here to create like kind of the little, it's going to create this little triangle shape. You basically want like a triangle, like a, a triangle with a round bottom for the corgi face. So you can see I'm poking my finger protectors a little, which is a little sketchy, but you know, it'll be fine. Now the thing about needle felting is since you're pushing it into the wool so much, you want to make it like a little bit bigger than what you think it's going to be. So like, like right now I put it on here, it looks way too big. But um, yeah, so for the Corgi, um, I want to find like the shorter length. Let me see if I'm actually in focus. I want to find the shorter length. Like this is shorter than this part, obviously. So this is where the head's going to be because corgis have like kind of longish bodies comparatively to how big their legs are. <laughs> um, it's going to make that a little bit more fleshed out. But yeah, so... I'm going to take this, stab it a little bit more, and now we got this little bit, and flip it upside down, it's basically a beard, basically like a long beard. We're going to put this on the face, and just take the 38 gauge needle, stab it on a bunch of times. Make sure it's a little bit more center. So now I'm just gonna we're gonna do the nose. Now the nose, when I first made this dog, I almost messed it up, but it actually ended up being a better technique that I did. Um, so for this dog, I'm just trying to give you as much tips as I can give you right now. So for this dog, her nose, I did just a circle, like just a little circle and stitched it on very carefully. Him, I gave a lot more room for in, like possible improvement if I needed it. I made his nose really long. Like I made his nose like a cylinder basically shape and it created a much better looking snout for him. So Hopefully, if anyone who watches this video and wants to do a dog decides to do one, hopefully they can um, use that little little technique. So, let's position myself better. Alright, so we're going to take, for attaching limbs and stuff and nose, or not nose, but the snout, you want to use the 38 gauge. That's the big, or whatever big needle you have. You guys might have different sizes. And, um, you know, just kind of go around it. The thing about recording this process of such a small thing is, like, the camera's not going to really pick it up that well plus this is white on white so it's like very hard to tell what I'm doing but yeah so basically that's that um, I just went around it to go into the face area and now what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna needle felt I'm gonna push it with the needles in 
so that it creates a little cute snout. So. I think this will actually be better with the 40 gauge. If you're wondering why I have three needles out, you'll see why with this next little step. <laughs> so now we're going to do the nose. So I'm just going to take black wool. And it's going to take a very, very tiny amount. Like that much. And then it's going to roll it with your fingers. Try to make a triangle shape if you can, like by, by doing this, like middle finger and then pinch it with two fingers. You can try to do that. It's not the easiest thing in the world because it's such a small, such a small shape, but since it's such a small shape, we're going to grab the 42 gauge needle. And I cannot show you this process easily. So I'm just going to do it and then try to explain what I did. So to start out, like doing the nose, what you want to do is you want to like make sure your two fingers with the protectors are going to be pinching it because if you just put it on and then start stabbing it it's just going to catch to the ne to the needle and then the needle is just going to pull it out like it's not going to do it but once you get a couple good you know stabs in and it starts sticking to the white wool you can do a nice little nose for the doggo. So it's not as so as you can probably tell it's not like the same level as the other one. It's a little bit more just centered. So what I'm gonna do is to hopefully fix that. Just kind of push the snout down and then push it back up. Now I'm going to put the eyes in. The eyes, I can take these off for now. The eyes are right here in a little bag. They gave me an odd amount of eyes. Like I have seven eyes left. So I can do three more things that have two eyes and then I could do one with one eye, which I might actually consider doing because one of my friend's dogs only has one eye so that might be a little fun project and a little fun gift for them so i'm gonna take this one that the kit gave me it is only it is just a smooth needle it is not at all for actually doing it when I um, actually first started making this dog I was just taking the black wool and I was just stabbing it with this one because I thought this was the needle that I needed to use but then I actually looked at the instructions and they were like oh no you need to use this to shape I was like okay so I'm gonna put the eyes Right there, just go in and out, in and out. And then it'll leave like a little hole that you can see. So don't worry about like, if you're not able to see it, you will, you will be able to see it. All right, so now we're gonna work on the ears. All right, so for the ears, it's gonna be a little bit of a it's a good, it's a good technique to use, especially for it's, and this is going to apply to the legs and stuff. So they're going to be white. We're going to start with white. And you're going to want to 
quite a bit, a little bit more than you, you would think. So, try to just make a little ball, stab it a little bit. And then you can attempt to make a square is what we want. We want, for the ears, we're going to want a square. So now we have a little square basically. And now not only are these shears good for, you know, snip snipping, whatever, we'll call it, uh, smoothing it out. There you go. But they're actually good for surprise. <laughs> Surprise, surprise, they're good for shearing, too. So, I'm just going to cut this in diagonally in half. Now, for ears, you want to make, like, these. These are obviously way too big for him. But for the ears, you want that. You want to make the base shape really freaking big. Like, you want to make it initially really big because you're going to want to make these very dense. Like, you're going to want to stab these with the 38 gauge needle a lot. Because if not, it's going to, they're going to be way too floppy. If you put this in, like, your bag or your backpack or something, it's just going to, they're going to be way too what, what, what's what's the opposite of sturdy like flop floppy i don't know i mean weak you just want them dense so that there's less of a risk of them falling off so now what i'm actually going to do is take a little bit of the orange wool right here and you don't want too much but you also don't want like not enough and you just want to lay it just want to lay it on the back grab the 40 gauge and then just stab it into the back of the ear So basically, you're just going to stab it into the back of the ear. It's going to show through. Like, let me see if I can get a better view for you. It's going to show through. Like, that isn't, like, extra. That's just that part stabbed through. And you basically want to do that. Create two little fox ears. And I'll be right. I'm going to do these really quickly. And then I'll be right back with you guys. All right. So I'm about to start the second ear with this. And, um... I'm going to show you the beauty of the shears that this kit gives you, um, or really any kit will give you, or they should at least give you a pair of shears. Um, they're probably the most helpful tool other than the needle and the wool. All right, so now I have the two ears right here, right there. You can kind of see them. And the thing about this is you can kind of see it it outlined just from stabbing it in the back. It outlined the white. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shear it a little bit. I'm just going to take a bit of the bottom off. And here's the thing. Here's the beauty of this. You can just pull it apart and then just put it back. So you don't have to waste too much wool. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make them a little bit more pointy. And a little bit less like fox ears. Even though foxes are fun fact, foxes are my favorite animal. 
It's because I'm foxy. All right, so got the two years. If you want, like, if you're really concerned about how much, like, um, orange is showing through, you can just grab a little piece of wool, white wool and then stab it on, which I might actually do because there's a lot more um, orange showing than I would like. So now I'm going to do the legs and tail. We got all the limbs. We basically have everything done. Um, we have everything right here. Um, so yeah, now all we need to do is attach them. I think I'm going to attach the legs first. So I'm going to put the tail on and then I'm going to show you a little trick of how to like reinforce it. Okay, so tail's on, um, but as you can see, it's like a little bit loose. So what you're gonna do is take some wool of the same color, and I can you can do this with the ears if you want, like in the back and in the front if you really want, but I'm only doing it with the tail just because the tail is the same color all the way around. And if I tried to do it with the ears, it would be way, it would just, be a lot of it would just be a lot <laughs> so just wrap it around form it into like a log and then just start poking it in <laughs> so there you have it a little small corgi let me just get get you guys a good view uh that eye looks a little bit high <laughs> i'm gonna lower it See, that's my my least favorite thing is the eyes can be so like the eyes can make or break the whole project. That nah, looks better. So there's a little corgi. No little heart booty today. Sorry. I I just I have work today, so I'm a little a little tight on time. I only had time to do this today. So yeah, uh you could always again smooth it out. Like I could definitely make this a little bit better. But this is just for videos the video's sake. It's not perfect. Again, I'm not perfect. I'm not claiming to be perfect. These are not ever going to be perfect and they're not ever going to be exactly the same um yeah uh start a little corgi stack <laughs> um so yeah if you would like to follow my instagram um, if you like the video, you can like it if you like it, you know, do all that jazz. Um, I'll link my Instagram in the comments, Joshua Joe Cooking, or whatever I decide to name the shop. And if I decide to create the shop account before, or whenever I decide to open it, I'll, that's when I'll update the description with it. So yeah, I hope you all have a good day and